Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and the fourth wall of the MCU has come crashing down faster than the walls of Jen Walters' courtroom because She-Hulk, as a series, will stay true to the comics by allowing this hero to go meta and address the audience directly, staring deep into our souls the way I do in these videos. Creepy, right? Don't worry, this hypoallergenic ring means any parasocial relationships will now go unrequited. And yes, kiddos, I'm back! After taking a week off to get married, I still have a job, and that job is to Overanalyze why the producers of She-Hulk are describing Jen's fourth wall breaking as a superpower, who Jen is talking to, and how this is all probably setting the stage for Deadpool. Yes, despite promos teasing us with cameos of Wong and Daredevil, is our man Wade Wilson waiting in the wings? Trailer footage revealed what She-Hulk's meta humor would look like. If you want to go back to life as a lawyer, I, I respect that. He doesn't mean that. And I propose to you that it's not Jen talking to us that's so weird about that, it's the fact that Bruce could hear her. Interviews with the cast and producers at a press conference last week confirmed that She-Hulk would be breaking the fourth wall like this, similar to Deadpool and Phoebe Waller-Bridge's amazing series Fleabag. But they also correctly acknowledged that She-Hulk technically made these kind of meta jokes in Marvel Comics years before Deadpool even existed. Really, breaking the fourth wall has always been part of She-Hulk's shtick. However, breaking the fourth wall is truly a trope as old as time, from Bugs Bunny's shorts to Shakespeare's soliloquies. The term comes from a theater convention in which an audience sees a scene closed in by three walls, with an invisible fourth wall between them and the stage that the audience can see through. Sometimes characters can break through this fourth wall to address the audience directly. But that She-Hulk press conference went further to describe She-Hulk's fourth wall breaking. Head writer Jessica Gao said, quote, it went through a lot of evolutionary steps, a long journey of how much should she talk to camera? Is she talking directly to the audience? Is there another meta element? Is she talking to somebody else that's more behind the scenes? And Tatiana Maslany added, quote, I think that there's something about She-Hulk's awareness, where she's able to go from being Jen to She-Hulk with a seamlessness. Her consciousness stays the same, and she's aware of the audience that feels like it's her superpower engaged with. And I think this is all super important to one of the biggest mysteries about Jen's power set. When Bruce Banner hulks out, he has to share his body with an alter ego of the Hulk, until presumably when he reached his smart Hulk balanced stasis, that was when the Bruce identity and the Hulk identity reached a kind of agreement. But when Jen hulks out from the get-go, she has no alternate identity to wrestle with. It's just her. So why doesn't Jen have another personality? I think she does actually, and I think it is us, or whoever she is talking to on the other side of that fourth wall barrier. That's why it's very interesting to hear the head writer raise this question of who Jen is actually talking to, this somebody else behind the scenes. It's a pretty unsettling notion when you think about it, especially when you consider that unlike famous fourth wall breakers like Deadpool or Zach Morris, other characters notice She-Hulk breaking the reality. He doesn't mean that. huge deal. They mentioned Fleabag as an influence, and if you watch that series, it's not that the main character addresses the audience, that's not that weird. Really, it's this one significant moment in the second season when Andrew Scott's character finally notices her doing it and calls it out. He's been annoying at me. What is that? What? That thing that you're doing. It's like you disappear. What? What are you not telling me? Nothing. Tell me what's going on underneath Nothing. there. Nothing. Tell me. Come on, no. you can tell me. Nothing. Ah, Nothing. Yeah, isn't it pretty freaky when he screams at the camera? So similarly, this subtle turn of the head from Bruce tells us that this fourth wall breaking is not just a convention structured into the format of the She-Hulk series. It's a behavior within the character's reality. From Bruce's perspective, Jen occasionally just looks off somewhere and mutters to herself. This also reminds us of the other times in the MCU characters have broken the fourth wall to narrate to the audience. It's actually pretty rare. Iron Man 3 opened and closed with Tony Stark talking to us directly. A famous man once said, we create our own demons. Who said that? What does that even mean? Doesn't matter. I said it because he said it. So now he was famous and basically getting said by two well-known guys. So if I were to wrap this up, tie it with a bow, whatever, my armor, it was never a distraction. It was a cocoon. But that movie's post credit scene revealed that Tony was actually talking to an audience in the movie, the co-star of this series, Bruce Banner. Wow. I had no idea you were such a good listener. To be able to share all my intimate thoughts and my experiences with someone, it just cuts the weight of it in half, you know? It's like a snake swallowing its own tail. Everything comes full circle. And, and the fact that you've been able to help me process. So, you with me? I was, yeah. We were at a... You actively napping? 
I, I was, I, I, I drifted. Now call me crazy, but I like to unwind at the end of the day with a cocktail or two. I know, so weird, right? But get this, I also like to feel good when I wake up in the morning. I know, so weird, right? Well, you might think those two things don't go together, but they actually do. All you gotta do is start your night by drinking a Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics is a probiotic drink that breaks down a toxic byproduct of alcohol called acetaldehyde. 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 It's that byproduct, not dehydration that makes martinis make for middling mornings. Z-Biotics is real science that works. Just drink a Z-Biotics, drink responsibly, pace yourself, and you're good to go. And you know what? I think I want to party tonight, so let's do this now. Hey, call me crazy. I just like being able to unwind and feel good when I wake up. You should give it a try. Get 15% off your first order of Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic by clicking the link in the description box and use my code NEWROCKSTARS at checkout. Go to zbiotics.com slash NEWROCKSTARS and get 15% off on your first order. You remember Thor Ragnarok and Thor Love and Thunder both include similar opening narrations. But Ragnarok revealed Thor was talking to a skeleton in the cage with him. And Love and Thunder revealed that Korg was talking to the Indigarian kids. Black Panther and Shang-Chi opened with narrations, but those were actually the voices of Njobu telling young Kill Monger the history of Wakanda, and Shang Chi's mother Ying Li telling him the history of Wen Wu. Ms. Marvel opened with Kamala Khan narrating her account of the events of Endgame, but that was for her YouTube video. Really, the closest example of this that we've gotten so far in the MCU has been WandaVision. Episode 6 opened with Billy speaking to camera, the way Malcolm does in Malcolm in the Middle. Episode 7, an episode titled Breaking the Fourth Wall, features Wanda and other characters giving talking heads interviews in the style of Modern Family, that is, until the creepiest twist occurs. I don't understand what's happening why it's all falling apart and why I can't fix it. Do you think maybe this is what you deserve? What? You're not supposed to talk. That off-screen voice was Katherine Hahn's voice modulated to a lower pitch, for as the closing song revealed, it was Agatha all along in the director's chair, presumably also who Billy was talking to in episode six. Again, the breaking of the fourth wall had an audience in the reality of the story. So when it comes to She-Hulk, this leaves us with two possibilities. A, She-Hulk could actually be talking to someone off-screen who will be revealed, or B, She-Hulk could just be talking to herself, and this could just be a new cosmic reality rule that's being opened up in the MCU. Much like that subtle, terrifying moment the Scarlet Witch looked at us in Multiverse of Madness, something that should never, ever happen. Despite the Russo brother's nephew doing it in Endgame in a scene with, well, what do you know, Hulk again. Either way, it's hard not to see She-Hulk's breaking of the fourth wall as part of a reality-shattering trend that started with Wanda and WandaVision and will lead inevitably to Deadpool. Setting the table so that Deadpool's meta humor makes sense in this reality, maybe even narratively justifying why these two characters do it. And before you say I am forcing Deadpool into this, Titania actor Jamila Jamil told comicbook.com that she expects Titania to return in the Thunderbolts and she name dropped Deadpool Ryan Reynolds. And if you've been paying attention to various statements from actors in recent weeks, it's almost as if a lot of these folks were told stuff ahead of D23 and just have an interesting way of dropping this stuff in interviews. Also, maybe I'm reading into it, but that car crash that causes Jen's power up features a slow motion free fall with floating odds and ends, visually super similar to the opening shot of the 2016 Deadpool film. So is She-Hulk in each of these meta moments talking to Deadpool and Deadpool to her? Probably not, but both of these characters as part of their powers have an ability to break reality and an inherent loneliness that gives them a need to tell their story to someone. The way Wanda's loneliness led her to break reality. So who was that audience? Maybe The Watcher, whom Thor Love and Thunder confirmed exists in some live action form? Or for that matter, Lady Death, Deadpool's lover from the comics who also must exist in live action form? Kang, who scripted all of this and is She-Hulk's destined foe in Kang Dynasty, according to Mark Ruffalo? Or could Marvel Studios blow our minds by suggesting that the disembodied one above all of the Marvel hierarchy are the viewers who dictate so much of this reality with our speculation, our fan art, and our headcanon. As we watch She-Hulk this season, just know that according to Marvel's own rules so far, Jen Walters must be talking to someone. And every time she does it, it makes the MCU a looser place for the Merc with the Mouth to slide in next to her and steal the mic. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me my lawyer can see you too? What has she been telling you? Does attorney-client privilege extend to Disney Plus subscribers? I hope so. Let me know your thoughts on this theory. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at EA Voss. Subscribe to New Rock Stars for more of my overall analysis. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.